Stone Brothers Production. Hello, welcome back to the Serial Killer series. Next up on the list is Delaware. There wasn't many serial killers I could find, so this will be a shorter video. This episode will be about three serial killers in Delaware, so let's begin. Number 3. James Allen Red Dog I couldn't find anything about James' early life, but I do have detailed evidence of what he did to his victims. James' method of murder was victims he chose personal disputes with and killed with stabbing him to death with a knife. On the early morning of February 10th, 1991, Sandra Bray was awakened by an unexpected phone call from an employee, age 52. She said she would be not in for work on the day because of a sudden illness. Stewart called out multiple times after that, and they thought it was weird that Stewart called out many times because she never missed a day of work during her many years of working for Mrs. Bray's husband. One day, Stewart called on a day that there was no work, and Mr. and Mrs. Bray thought it was weird. So they decided to drive over to Stewart's home in Wilmington, Delaware. When Mr. and Mrs. Bray arrived to Stewart's residence, they noticed that Stewart wasn't home at all and her car was missing. It was weird that Stewart's roommate, which was a 30-year-old relative named Hugh Pennington, appeared to be gone from the house as well. His car was still parked in the driveway, so the last place the Brays decided to look was in the cold, damp cellar. Once they reached the bottom stair of the cellar, their morning took a bizarre and grisly turn. They ended up finding Hugh Pennington's body bound with duct tape in nothing but underwear, and worst of all, his throat was slit ear to ear. The cut was so deep that his head had nearly been decapitated from his body. Bloody footprints were found near Pennington's body, so they decided to call 911 right away. Sergeant Mark Daniels of the Delaware State Police arrived to the scene and took charge of the gruesome murder. One of Stewart's neighbors gave the most important element in solving a murder, which is the suspect being her husband, James Red Dog. She said that her husband accompanied Stuart to her house and had spent the evening watching movies with her. One answer she said interested the sergeant the most is that her husband, James, was a convicted killer. James Red Dog was a full-blooded Sui Indian member of the Locato tribe and had been in and out of jail his entire 37 years. He received two different convictions on manslaughter and murder and should have gotten more time in his prison term but he got out early on these convictions. James went to Stewart's house the night before the phone calls to see if she was home because of not finding any woman to sleep with at the bowling alley. When Stewart's roommate Pennington answered the door, he forced himself in, and then that was when the attack happened on Pennington. After he left Pennington dead in his own pool of blood, he went back home and said he needs to discuss something important with Stewart at her place. His wife Joanna and Red Dog went to Stewart's place together, and this ride almost cost her life. He forced himself onto Stuart, raping her multiple times while she was too scared to move while lying down next to him while he was asleep. Red Dog raped and sodomized her the next morning before taking her to a deserted farmhouse in her car in Oak Orchard. He raped Stuart one more time in the farmhouse and told her to drive to a friend's house to pick up something. That request was careless on belief. He left her in the car alone and fortunately enough she escaped and drove home to her place to find the police there. Stewart told about the unfortunate event she experienced, found out police told her that her roommate had been murdered by James Red Dog. Daniel sent out a massive search to find James, and he was captured the same day while crossing Winchester Bridge in Wilmington on foot. The squad said he matched the description and wanted photos of the rapist murderer to the man they saw on the bridge. When they pulled him over, they asked, what's your name? And he replied, James Red Dog, and he was arrested soon after. Red Dog was found guilty and convicted on a brutal sex crime against Stewart and received eight years in prison. He also received the death sentence for killing Pennington in the 1992 trial for lethal injection. In only a year, the 39-year-old James Red Dog was strapped to the lethal injection bed, his last words apologizing to his family and told him that he loved them. Also, he said to the rest of you, he concluded with, you can kiss my ass. Number two. Martha Patty Cannon Martha Cannon was the wife of a local farmer, Jesse Cannon, and was widowed at some point in 1826 or a little before that. She lived in Reliance, Maryland and a few other counties in Maryland before moving to Sussex County, Delaware. 
Cannon and her husband had one daughter, but married another man in which both men were engaged into criminal slave-stealing trade. Her first husband, named Henry Brereton, was a blacksmith who kidnapped black people for sale, but went to prison in 1811 for kidnapping, but had escaped Georgetown, Delaware jail. Henry was recaptured and was convicted of murder, and he was hung with one of the criminal associates, Joseph Griffith. Some point after this, Martha's daughter married a man named Joe Johnson who became Martha's most notorious partner in crime. Martha was a leader of a gang and as late of 1826, kidnapped many free blacks and sold them to plantation owners. One victim that was taken by the gang wrote in a journal that they kept free African Americans, chained them up and hide them in basements, attics, and secret rooms in Martha's home. They would hide the slaves under wagons and took them to a ferry that would take them to Schooner traveling down the Delaware River to Chesapeake Bay and finally to the Georgia's slave markets. During that time, many local law enforcement officials were reluctant to stop their illegal operations because of the fact that they were very violent, which they would severely whip the captives, even killing some of them. When Martha knew the authorities would come, she would slip to other states to avoid local police forces. The gang was initially indicted in May of 1822. Joe Johnson, one of the gang members, was sentenced to the pillory and had 39 lashes to his body. Martha and several other gang members, though were charged with Johnson, did not go to trial nor receive their sentences and continued their gang-related activities. However, in 1829, four bodies were discovered in the farm property that Martha owned in Delaware and was discovered by a tenant farmer doing plowing there. Later on in April 1829, she was indicted on four counts of murder by a grand jury of 24 white males for an infant female. In April of 1822, a male child on April 1822, and an adult male on October 1st, 1820, and another African-American boy on June 1st, 1824. Cannon died in her cell on May 11th, 1829 at the age of 60 to 70 years old. Sources differ with Cannon on her being convicted, sentenced to hang before her death in her cell, and the other sources is Cannon committed suicide or died from natural causes. Number 1. Stephen Brian Pennell, aka The Corridor Killer Stephen Pennell was a complete monster with the crimes he committed, and shocked the little state of Delaware from the twisted savagery of the crimes he committed. Not much is known about his childhood, but he was brought up in a normal and stable childhood. At one point in Delaware, he applied to numerous positions for a Delaware Police Department. Up until this point, he pursued a career in criminology, having completed multiple semesters at the University of Delaware. Unfortunately, all his applications were rejected for various reasons, and Stephen ended up being an electrician. Stephen married and they both settled in Newcastle, Delaware. But the marriage wasn't healthy because he was very controlling in the marriage. In November of 1987, Stephen began what was the most appalling case of murder in the history of Delaware. For the next 11 months, Stephen was along Interstate 40 and 13 in search of finding women he could torture and rape. He found the perfect victim in a form of a prostitute he convinced a local hooker to get in his van and then drove her to an isolated spot where he committed the unspeakable amounts of torture and rape. He had a rape kit, but he would change his devices from using such items like pliers, a whip, handcuffs, needles, knives, and other types of restraints to throw the police off their track to thinking that it's a separate killer. Steven sometimes would simply bind his victims by the hands and ankles while he would rape and beat their buttocks with his whip. Other times he would hit them with a hammer until they're battered and bloody but leave them alive. In other cases, he would use pliers to squeeze the victim's breasts and cut off their nipples. Eventually, after all the brutal torture, he would show little to no mercy by strangling them to death, then bashing their skulls in with blunt objects to make sure they are dead in a heinous way. Finally, Stephen would dump their body along wooded areas near Highway 40 and 13. The corridor killer was finally caught after five murders when an undercover Delaware police officer, Renee Lana, posing as a prostitute on Route 40 was able to apprehend the suspect, gathering enough evidence of fibers of the victim in Stephen's van. They submitted the fibers into the FBI laboratory for testing, which one of the victims had the same fibers from Stephen's van, and the results were the perfect match to arrest Stephen. 
Due to the local police having no experience with a serial murder, so the FBI agreed to help. Mostly had help from Special Agent John Douglas and Stephen Merrigan, which Douglas testified against Stephen Pennell at his 1989 trial. On Halloween of 1991, Pennell was sentenced to die by lethal injection after having been convicted on two of the five murders he committed. On March 14, 1992, Pennell at the age of 34 during this time was executed and the execution was so expensive it costed the state $47,000. Pennell was the first man in 45 years to be executed in Delaware. I hope you enjoyed the short list of Delaware serial killers. Next up on the list is the state of Florida, which is notorious for serial killers, so this episode will be broken down into a few parts. I probably won't mention all the serial killers on the list because there's so many of them, so I'll pick and choose the most prolific ones. I hope I did better on my voice, guys. Just let me know in the comments what I can do to change it. I hope you all have a good day and stay tuned for my next episode.